Hello everyone, welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2. We are going to continue with the development of our space shuttle because we have had some problems recently. But first I wanted to point out a peculiarity when I tried to open it. It says, this save file requires more resources than available in current VAB. You can still load and work on it, but you cannot launch it if there are not enough resources. I don't know what that means. Anyway, uh, this is uh, the shuttle, but I have made a few changes and done some testing on the side because, of course, we had some glitches and I didn't want to belabor the full glitch testing process. But my conclusion was that it isn't the RCS ports tentatively. I mean, it could recur again, but it seems to stop happening when I changed out the decoupler at the back for two docking ports instead. And people were right, yeah. Uh, I was used to the situation in KSP-1 where one docking port could still undock to a payload, uh, but it seems like we need two docking ports. That might have been a modded situation in the first place. Now, I tested it with two senior docking ports and found that even when I set the docking acquire force to 0%, the payload really liked to reconnect immediately to the docking port. So we're using the standard docking ports so that the payload doesn't immediately snap back to it uh, because I had that problem and it was very annoying. So we have the RCS thrusters, that's a positive, and we have uh, these uh, docking ports for the payload and we have the forward uh, docking arrangement still. So we will see whether this is truly bug free or not. Uh, somebody pointed out correctly that my uh, left bottom engine was not sticking out. I th thought I had tweaked it out the right way, but apparently not, so I fixed that. And we will see how this works out. Now, the roll issue isn't because of that engine. The roll issue that we have is when we deviate from the prograde vector or are too low with the shuttle. So we're going to try and go steeper because that's better for... Uh, preventing the roll issue that we've had previously. Okay, so, well, that's a different Delta V than I was reading before. All right, let's go. Hopefully it hasn't, like, disconnected the fuel line again. Again, you're giving me pointers? Every time it gives me pointers. I need to stop that. Okay, water deluge system. Okay, and launch. And we still have a little bit of a dip initially. Just a little bit of a sinking feeling. And it's Jeb in this time. This is not the same save where we have to rescue Jeb, by the way. This is a separate testing save. So in theory, I've got S as pitch up finally. But it's like opposite what it says in the controls, so it's weird. We seem to be a little bit tail heavy when we dump the payload. Previously, we seem to be nose heavy when the payload in. But we end up tail heavy if we still have mop propellant in the shuttle. Okay, booster set. The boosters actually sort of hit the wings a bit sometimes. The wings can deal with it apparently, but that's not ideal. So on re-entry, if you need to troubleshoot your shuttle, the deal is that if you seem to be flipping backwards, like it's nosing up too much, your center lift is uh, center, center mass is too far back behind your center of lift. If you seem unable to pull up, your center mass is too far forward. And we want to get to a 100 kilometer by 100 kilometer orbit for re-entry testing. So we'll cut there. Uh, I don't know if the external tank is going to automatically uh, disappear at 35 kilometers. Guess we'll find out. Okay, external tank separation and RCSing up. Turning off those engines and staging. Oh, uh, we only loaded half fuel, okay. I was wondering, yeah. So we only loaded half of the mop propellant, which is probably still more than what we need. Okay. Pushing forward a bit. And shut down. That's OMS burn one. 
the RCS do seem more like RCS. Like, and you can sort of tell why they probably sound like howitzers. They go, they, they're very impulsy. We'll release the tank in orbit. And in the future, I think it'll be a rendezvous target. I have to test rendezvous and docking. Okay, that's good enough. Let us test the release of the payload and hope we don't have issues. Undock. Okay, it has been undocked. And now it says vehicle out of fuel. No. <laughs> I don't know why these have to fire when we're going down, but... And we are going to boost up. There's a lot of extra RCS firing. Mechjeb, this is not. We're boosting up to waste some mod propellant. The engines are very heavy, so... In a pinch, I'll move the wing back a bit. It could certainly move back. I, I said I put it in the right place, but really, it probably should be moved at least this much back. Okay, we'll have the APB 300 kilometers, and then now we'll go back down. Bring it back down to 100 kilometers. So yeah, important, if you do have center of mass issues, one thing you can do, first of all, moving the wing is a thing. Second of all, making sure that you're not coming down with more propellant than you ought to be. And third of all, if you are bringing down some payload, make sure it's placed in the bay properly, close to the center of mass. Uh, with the payload previously, I think most of it was in front of the center of mass, so it caused us to have more nose down potential. Uh, well, we're gonna be a little bit lopsided, but I'll take that for now. 100 kilometers on average. Our lift should be able to correct stuff. I don't like the space center is gonna be in the dark, so we're going to wait a bit. Okay, right there should mean that when we deorbit, we'll be in daylight. In fact, our deorbit location is right about here-ish. Alright, let's go for that. But yeah, so the only duplicated method to solve the problem that we saw in the previous video was not putting a decoupler in the bay. And I had tried removing the RCS thrusters as a way to solve it, and that didn't work. This whole thing, with it turning into tech camo is uh i know why it is it happens to me when i make textures in substance painter as well now uh, you'll see it on occasion on the orion carrier plane so as before we'll just go to 30 kilometers and that pretty much uses all of our fuel another reference for the deorbit location in this case is uh when this peninsula over here starts coming over the horizon and we finish it finish the deorbit burn Still short of this peninsula that looks sort of looks like Florida. Now, if you're starting from a higher orbit, the periapsis you would set would be lower. So if you're at 120 kilometers, you would want that periapsis to be lower. If you're starting from a lower orbit, say 80 kilometers, you'd want the periapsis that you set for re-entry to be higher. Other re-entry tips, uh, if you feel like you're falling short, you would pitch down a bit if you are or, there, there are other ways of going about it, but uh, falling short, all you really can do is pitch down a bit uh, in order to get more lift. And then if you are going too far, you can pitch up a bit or try and do S-turns. But S-turns, especially with the keyboard controls right now, uh, I, I wouldn't want to do it. But, of course, there are people who are much more experienced controlling aircraft-like things with keyboard than I am. It's having a bit of trouble. Gotta try pitching down. It's feeling vaguely stally right now. Seems like we're falling short. That's the thing, the last time the shuttle was heavier. And when you're heavier, 
the atmosphere slows, uh, has more trouble slowing you down. When you're lighter, the atmosphere has an easier time slowing you down. Oh yeah, yeah, we, our center of lift is too far forward. Uh, so you actually have to adjust for that based on what payload you're bringing down. And we brought down a lot of payload last time. And that just got us right. So actually, instead of 30 kilometers, we should aim higher at that re-entry point. We're not making it back to the KSC today. Oh yeah. Oh, it's 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 got issues. Aerodynamic issues. Actually, I mean, assuming aerodynamics works at all, right? We're making grand assumptions here. Right now, we're flying backwards. So maybe I shouldn't make too many assumptions that my knowledge is going to actually be useful. I'll gear down. Still hopeful. It seems to be aerodynamic now, so that's weird. See, right now, we seem to be good aerodynamically. Uh, I don't feel like there's much of a nice landing spot around here, though. So, all that mess is dubious. Should be pretty close to a stall speed here. Oop! 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 Okay, brakes! Thank goodness the trees aren't collidable! Oh no, but other things are! Oh, it all died. Ah. Okay, revert to VAB here. I'm very tempted to put double vertical stabilizers. And the reason for that is if your... If your shuttle is going weird, in the area that this shuttle is going weird, then oftentimes that means you don't have enough vertical stabilizer. Because the RCS thrusters and reaction wheel is aren't good enough, why is that dot floating there? Aren't good enough to hold the yaw properly at that point. And you need the vertical stabilizer to do it. Hmm. Anyway, the first thing we're gonna do it was flying okay though after a while which is maddening but I'll move the wing back a bit but yeah it disturbs me that it was flying okay and we might have to pitch down a little bit earlier and that might help maybe if we pitch down a little bit earlier and get into a good flight regime maybe it won't stall out like that It felt pretty good flying. Maybe I shouldn't move the wing too far back. Let us try this out one more time and see if I can get re-entry right. Okay, ignition and skip countdown and launch. Okay. It's Jeb again. Yeah, of course, the reason why we're reading so much mop propellant up there is because of the clipped tanks in the nose. Apparently that clipping doesn't cause any problems. Uh, so, maybe clipping isn't the problem after all. Why having a decoupler in the cargo bay is a problem, I have no idea, but... Um, if the shell continues to work, it will turn out to be the case that having a decoupler in the cargo bay was the problem. So keep that in mind, that, that could be pretty critical. I'm sure many people would be putting the couplers in cargo bays. Okay, booster set. Ooh. Oh, see, it hit the... I should put Sempertrons on those. Yeah, the Space Center does remind me strongly of something that might be in Dubai. Okay, I'll dispose of it a little bit earlier. And separation and avoidance. And we'll 
boost up to the 100 kilometers now. Probably a better procedure. Alright, well I already have a docking target up here, so I think we'll bring the payload back down. And this time we won't try and dump fuel, since I moved the wing back. I think our main mitigation for the issues that we had last time will be to pitch down earlier. So we're going to go right into deorbiting, Especially since otherwise the launch site's got to be in the dark soon. So this time we'll go to 35 kilometer periapsis because we ended up short last time. And right around here should be the start of our retro burn. Oh, it didn't continue to burn while I was in time warp. I guess it has its own rules about when to do that. Okay, and shut down. So now I'm going to eject the payload. Undock. And switch vessels again. And push away. All right, good. Closing. Okay, so let's see what goes on. I would be okay with pitching down starting at 1500 meters per second. So we'll plan on that. Okay, we're we coming in. I haven't even checked whether we still have the old air brakes. I think we overshot this time. 35 kilometers is too much. I wonder if it's advisable to try and turn. Uh, no, no. Uh, okay, maybe. I and mean, we need to hit land somehow. It's a bit of land over there. Uh, it's still lofting up the nose. Yeah, try keep it pitched down. No, it, and then it rolls all over the place. Yeah, I don't know about the aerodynamics right now. I think next time we're gonna have to try planes. We're gonna have to see about planes that go fast. Slow plane, it seems fine when it's going slow. Slow is not a problem. Well, okay, slow, slow is not as much of a problem. <laughs> slow, slow, slow is a little bit of a problem, but still. Hmm. Maybe we just need much bigger control surfaces than even I've got right now. Uh, it was an island over here, but I can't see it anymore. We gotta test our first splashdown landing. I mean, well, splashdown. There's not much land involved. Yeah, it's no good if our shuttle goes out of control regularly on the way back down. Okay, splashdown test time. I don't think I was particularly impressed with the water physics before, though. Whoa, 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 not that far down, not that far down. Uh, um, we went all swirly and then it got all dark. Jeb is apparently alive. Recover vessel. Uh, let's just verify. This is the situation. I think we're going underwater here. Recover vessel. Confirm. Well, vessel launch, vessel launch, vessel destroyed, vessel recovered. It could be, I don't know, uh, maybe that was maybe the external tank? I don't know. Uh, I guess we were recovered. Vessel launch, vessel launch though. 
I don't recall launching two of them like that, but... Okay. Vehicle assembly building. So, yeah, oh, we can't do it like that. Vine revert, then. So, the shuttle remains a work in progress. We are going to need to examine flight dynamics in Kerbal Space Program in greater detail. I'm not entirely sure what's going wrong. I mean, it ends up stable at lower speeds, but basically past Mach 0.5, which is not very fast, uh, and then up to Mach 5, it's all bad. So it could be just the reaction with control is strong enough at lower speeds to hold it, in which case it's still the imbalance. Uh, so maybe we'll try it out with jets. Maybe we'll fit it with jets and see what happens. I think that might be a thing to do, but for now, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.